Welcome everyone to the Woodbridge Channel's coverage of high school sports. We are at the rack for the county championship finals between the Patriots of Colonia and the St. Joe's Falcons. Falcons. Thank you. I lost it for a second. I'm Craig Coughlin. I'll be bringing the game my colleague Joe Tarrant. And Joe, the place is jumping as we get set for the tip-off. The rack is rocking. Colonia controls a tip. Number two seed, Colonia, comes in at 19 and eight against the number one seed and the five-time consecutive GMC champion, St. Joe's, coming in at 20 and three. How about Craig, I gave you the uh, starting line. There's a Colonia. three to start the game for Jordrell Thompson. Starting for Colonia is Chase Barneys, Jodrell Thompson, James Corbett. Brandon Haynes and Patrick DeGuib. And, and such signature defense. We saw the Patriots play a tremendous defensive game against East Brunswick, except for the last four minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, they got a little sloppy there. Let's give you the starting lineup for St. Joe's. That's number 25, Brian Carley with the ball. Gives it off to number five, Breen Tyree. He's their leading scorer. Rolls in and out. He was the only player back from last year's championship team. And if you recognize the name Tyree and you're a Giant fan, it's because that uh, David Tyree, who made that great catch against his helmet, is his uncle. There's Brandon Haynes, throws up a wild shot. Nagui with the rebound, he puts that it back puts up. Puts it in. Polonia up. Five zip, 6.44 left to go in the first quarter. Rounding out the starting lineup for the Falcons. Number 35 is junior, six foot four. Branislaw, oh boy. Uh, Lujadinovic, number 10, uh, a 6'3 senior, Marcus Asramol, Ashmol, I should say. And number 25, we said, is Brian Carley. He's six foot seven, so great size for the Falcons. Ball tipped away by the Patriots. Here comes Haynes with the ball. He doesn't have numbers, but goes to the basket, has it blocked by Carley. And Colonia and Carl Ball. Yeah, Carl Carly was on the end of the, the line. And rounding out the starting lineup for St. Joe's is Mike Granda. He is a five foot eight sophomore guard, number 14. Good start for the Patriots. Couldn't have asked for much better, Joe. No, it, it, surprisingly, uh, St. Joe's hasn't put anything in the basket yet. I expect this to be a brawl tonight. I expect this to be. Inbound to the Gwib, knocked loose. Should be. Yeah, it should be Patriot. Oh, that's a bad call. <laughs> he just missed it. For the folks who are watching from St. Joe's, you get a tape. You're going to be a little dis... Well, you're going to think we're not fair, and we probably won't be. Uh, yeah, we have to be slanted towards Colonia, yeah. Sure, they're wonderful kids. Tremendous players, obviously. Tremendous program to win five in a row. From Middlesex County, sort of. At least some of them are. So we'll root for them as they get out into the states. But for now, Barney's comes away with the interception. Thompson, and he's fouled. First foul of the game, and that's going to be on 35. Yeah, Vujadinovic. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the young man's name, and I apologize for that. But I've never heard it pronounced, and I'm trying to do it phonetically. Thompson's first free throw is good. Nice yeah. soft touch. Only up by six. Second one is rims out. Rebound to Ashimol. Clooney might have got away with a foul on that when he came over the back trying to rebound. I think it was Corbett. No whistle. Tyree goes baseline, kicks Pick it out the Granda. He'll try the three, and it's good. Got it. St. Joe's is on the board. 6 3. St. Joe's has won 42 consecutive GMC games. Wow. That's a tough string to break. Barney's tracks down the miss, but can't get it. Carly is there, and here come the Falcons. Tyree dishes it off, and then it's in. Ashmole with the lay-in, and it's 6-5, Colonia. 
439 to go as we approach the midpoint of the first quarter. Haynes stops and pops from 15, no good. Rebound Tyree. St. Joe's looks to push the ball. Dishes it out there, tried to dish it out to Grenda, but Barney's is there, they got numbers. And it doesn't go. Wow, well, you say Carly was six foot seven, and or is six foot seven. He gets the ball oh. down low, and then we get a foul. That's uh, going to be on I Haynes. Maybe, I thought maybe he traveled on that. Nah, I think he got him on the reach around. Oh, that was I'm sorry, that wasn't uh, Carly. Carly six listed as six foot seven. That was uh, Ujadinovic, who is listed as six four. Sorry. Here's, we'll take a look at the replay, and there we see yeah, it. He, he, he got him across the um, across the arm. arm yeah, there. he got him. Tyree's going to try a three. No good. Goes off the top of the backboard. That should have been a dead ball, but they'll play it. Corbett dribbles right, stops, pops for three, Boom. banks it in. Off the backboard. What a shot. J.J. Corbett has his first basket of the game. Colonia, 9-5. I think at this point in the game, they're just feeling each other out, really. I mean, they're playing hard, but uh, I don't think you could base. I don't there think you could base much uh, the game on the first quarter. Fouls on Thompson, second on the Patriots. I saw the scoreboard flash up Haynes' name for that basket. I had uh, Bryce Lane comes in Corbett, so for we'll St. Joe's. That. Going out is number 25, Brian Carley. There's a three. So Bryce Lane just into the game and he scores a quick three. A runny shot, no good. Brandon, he walked in. Yes. Got knocked down, I think by his own guy. I think that was uh, Jadinovic who knocked him down. St. Joe's crew was just right under their basket. Yeah, they don't like the call, but they're fans. Inbounds wide open for three is Thompson. Can't get it to go. Rebound Asimov, and here comes St. Joe's. Brandon guarded by Barneys, kicks it out. Tyree goes wow. baseline, and he has his first points of the game. What a move. Nice and smooth. And St. Joe's takes their first lead of the game. Looks like Coloni is uh, content to shoot the three. Well, Tyree, no good. Haynes with the rebound. Barney's. Barney's walking it up. Sorry, Joe. That's okay. The Gwib with the ball. Colonial strength has been its defense. They talked about it after the semifinal victory over East Brunswick. A lot of ball movement. Nice ball movement down low to Haynes. Kicks it back out for two. That's a long Good. two by J.J. Corbett. That was a nice play, kicking it back out like that. There we go, wide open, nice. Nice, good anticipation there. Can he save it? Nope. A diving attempt by Jodrell Thompson. And we got a substitution in the game for uh, St. Joe's, number 11, Brandon Goldie. He's a five foot 11 senior. Going out was number 14, Michael Granda for St. Joe's. And in the game for, there's Goldie with it right away. Blocked by Nguib, but out of bounds. In the game for the Patriots, number 24 is Colby Chapman, and number 23 is Desmond Jackson. We saw them uh, come off the bench against East Brunswick in the semis. They were the first two players off. Cloney played eight players in that game. Nice put back there by 
Bryce Lane. Nobody under the basket for Colonia. Don't, don't worry, Colonia still has their secret weapon, Trevor, Trevor yep. Bavilacqua. Yeah, he came in and dropped in six points in that first quarter against uh, East Brunswick. Nice move to get Good to the basket, yeah. and J.J. Corbett gets it to drop. Under a minute to go now here in the first quarter. Been a very competitive first quarter. Colonia 13, St. Joe's 12. Tight defense. Boy, it was Thompson all over three. And we get an offensive foul. That's going to be on Tyree. That'll be his first. He's wondering why. Coming out for Colonia is Naguib. Coming in is number 25, and that's uh, Brandon Haynes. Cloney operating outside the arc with 32 seconds to go. Not sure if they'll hold for one. They, I suspect they will, right? Yeah, I would think so. You got a one-point lead. You're the underdog. Nice anticipation by Ashmole, but he can't quite get there. And Barney's rescued. I'm sorry, uh, Corbett rescues for Colonia. Now they'll certainly, certainly play go. it out. Yeah, certainly go for the last shot now. Haynes comes out. Ten seconds to go now. Colonia going to have to start to make their move pretty soon. They're pretty far away from the basket with five yeah. seconds to go. Corbett's going to take it. He's going to drive the lane, gets double teamed, spins around, shoots, and it's good! The what a terrific play by J.J. Corbett. Puts Colonia up by one, 13-12 at the end of the first quarter. Now it's 15. They, they didn't put it up so when you look. Okay, 15 -12. There we go. Look at this nice move there by Corbett. Yeah, let's take a look at that. That's a heck of a play. We see him stop. He doesn't travel on the pivot foot. Gets a nice soft touch, and bam, you see it behind there on the scoreboard. Zero points as it goes through. So a great first quarter for Colonia. And at the end of one, they lead 15-12. to 12. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Stay with us. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Craig Coughlin, Joe Tarrant with you from the Rack in Piscataway. Yeah, the boys' championship here, Middlesex County. It's been a great, it was a great first quarter. Colonia had, did everything that it wanted to do, defended well, got some threes from Thompson and Corbett, and got a nice soft touch. That goes off Tyree's hands, and the Patriots will get it up by three with 7.54 to go as they try to break the really remarkable string by St. Joe's, 42 straight GMC victories, five straight championships. Give you the lineup for Colonia here as we start the second quarter. We've got uh, Joe Drell Thompson, J.J. Corbett. We've got Desmond Jackson, Kelby Chapman, and Brandon Hayes with Nguib uh, waiting to come in. Tight man-to-man -man by the Falcons. And now Thompson's in trouble, finally set, gets it over to Corbett. He'll drive the lane, stops, pops, long two, no good, right into the hands of uh, Jadanovic. He'll dribble it up. Jadanovic is a transfer from, he's, well, he's from Serbia, and I think he went to a prep school and transferred to St. Joe's. How he found out about St. Joe's. And we get a whistle. That's oh, that's, and the basket's good. Oh. Yeah, I don't think they, 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 the referee called it just as he went over the uh, over the free throw line. Um, I didn't know they had continuation in high school. Let's take a look at that again. He, he calls the foul there, yeah. and then he starts. He, it's long before he calls. He throws the ball up, but yeah, I, I didn't think that uh, was continuation. Third foul on Colonia. See who it was again, so it'll be side out. Oh, they did call, okay. They didn't count the basket. Referee did indicate yeah, it. Yeah, one referee indicated it, but they didn't. 
Ashmole for two, no good, rattles out. Let's give you the starting lineups here in the second quarter for St. Joe's. That was number 10, or, uh, Marcus Ashmole. He started the game. Number 35 is Bratislaw Juvenanovic. Number five is Tyree Breen. I'm sorry, is uh, Breen Tyree. Tracked down in the corner by Thompson. Thompson. Number 11 is Brandon Golden. And there's a three for Barney's, no good. And number one, getting the ball to Bryce Lane. Lane led St. Joe's in scoring that first quarter with five. Mike Granda had three. Marcus Ashmole had two. And Green Tyree had two. Down low is no, and it won't Thompson. Go. Can't get it to go. Nguib with the rebound and gets yep, it, puts it back. Baby. Patrick Nguib with his second bucket of the game. And it's a 17-12 Colonia lead. I love watching Patrick play. I really do. Joe Drell Thompson has four for Colonia. J.J. Corbett has nine to lead the way. Ashamol takes a step and a get a whistle. And a foul. I think it's going to be on Nguib. Nguib did some job on uh, Addis Ralph the other night. Keeping him, I think, what, two points in the game? Yeah. Inbound to Ashmole, he loses control, and it's got to be Colonia Ball. Barney brings it up for Colonia. Gives it over to Corbett. Double team. He gets it out of there. And the Gwib has Thompson. Thompson goes up and under. Can't get it to go. Tipped around into the hands of Ashamol. And now they're going to call the. Thompson's going to get called for the yeah. foul. That's going to be his second. 15 foul. Yeah, I figured they're going to sit uh, JJ down. Here's our man, Trevor Bavilacqua. He's into the game. There he is. Trevor had some nice moves. Got a nice little lefty touch. There, we'll see if he can exhibit that once again. 5.34 to go. Big Colonia contingent here behind the basket to your right, if you're watching on, uh, on the screen, the one the Patriots are defending right now. St. Joe's fans on the other end, so they both shoot into their home crowds at the, uh, the end of the game, second half. Rajinovic gets it to Breen, no good, off of the hands of Bevilacqua. Saved by Goldie, gets it to Granda. Ashimol from the free throw line, gets it to go. Marcus Ashimol has four. Cloney up, 17-14. And now some pressure out of a 1-2-2 two, two in the backcourt by St. Joe's, but the Patriots get it into the forecourt. Have a lock, a nice pass down low to Haynes. Can't get it to go. Rebound Breen. 4.45 to go. Stolen. Has his pocket pick by J.J. Corbin. He's going to go up. And, and it doesn't go. Ashamol was there to defend the tie-up. Should be Colonia's ball. Let's, let's see what the... Ref is looking for a little help. And it's Colonia's ball on the alternate possession. Oh, there's the, the marker. Sorry. Take a look at that one again if we can. You see Corbett was down there, but Ashamol defended it well. S slapped the backboard, but didn't slap him. And now Wudinovic uh, makes the nice steal. Gets it ahead to Grand. Uh, Green goes baseline. I think he stepped on the end line. That's and exactly he what he's saying, yeah. Ref was right on top of that. Yep, he was there. Great position by the referee. St. Joe's doesn't like to call the, the students. Colonial crowd chanting overrated. They may want to wait a minute or two right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Long three by Barney's. No good. Tipped around and into the hands of Ashamol. Gets how it to Goldie. How many points does Colonia have this quarter? Just two. Yeah, that's what I thought. But that's all that St. Joe's has, too. It was 15 to 12 at the end of the first quarter. Both teams working hard for their shots. No good. Rebound, Barneys. And he'll walk the ball up the court. 
McWib outside the arc. Patriots content to run a set here. Now we're going to press the action as we hit the 3.30 mark of the first half. Barney's with a little crossover dribble, guarded by the smaller Granda, gets it to go, no good. Rebound Granda, and the sophomore gets it out to Tyree, and he's going to get fouled by Brandon Haynes for the shot. One thing we forgot to mention is both teams are playing man-to-man -man defense. Well, they are, that's true. I think that's going to be this sixth foul on the Patriots. That's the second foul on uh, Brandon Haynes. He sits down. So two on him, two on Thompson. Right into the hands of Nguib. It's nice to have the replay here, Joe. Nice yeah. anticipation by Asimov. Colby oh. Chapman can't defend it, and then he makes a silly foul. Yeah, it was. That was a frustration foul. It's Chapman. Coach Chiara is having a talk with him. And speaking of Coach Chiara, congratulations to him. Before the game, he was named as the GMC uh, Coach of the Year in the White Division. Congratulations, Coach. That's the 17th foul. This is the back end of a made shot, so it would just be the one shot. But the foul was on Chapman. Chapman had his pocket picked. He tried to get back to it, and then he was frustrated. Now some pressure. Uh, St. Joe's lines up the trap in the backcourt, but Colonia avoids it. Brian Carley back in the game. Oh. That one dropped for Trevor the other night. This one rolls in and out. Trevor Bevelock was shot. Tyree gets fouled by Barneys as he goes to the basket. Now we're starting to see a lot of fouls. And that'll send him to the line for two. Let's see the foul again. See a nice little move by him. Barney stays with him. And he just gets a yeah, he gets a, bit. Gets a shooting arm. Yeah. And we've got a timeout on the court with two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Colonia on top, 17 to 16. We'll take a break. Come back. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. And welcome back. Joe Tarrant, Craig Coughlin from the Rack County Championship Final. Breen Tyree headed to the line for two. 2.30 to go, chance to give St. Joe's the lead once again. First one is up and good. Oh, we are a tie. You know, Craig, this uh, game shook out the way it was supposed to. Number one seed, number two seed. It's the first lead by St. Joe's here in the second quarter. Oh, I'm sorry, we're a tie, I'm sorry. Now, now that's got yeah, it. Now it's first lead of the second quarter by St. Joe's. Four points for Tyree. Now, token pressure in the backcourt. Be careful about those sidelines. That's they form another player, in other words, another effectively, I should sure. say. Let you trap. Nice pass to Bevilacqua. Kick. Off the foot of Carly. <laughs> Bevilacqua tried to get it down low. Carly was able to get his foot out there and block it. Corbett looking to get it in. Showed good patience there, didn't panic. But you could have a kind of a sense that it's getting a little long, right? Yeah. There is Corbett. It goes up and tries to go underneath Carly, but Nguib is there for the rebound. Can't control it. And it's going to be a Colonia ball off the hands of Bryce Lane. As we said the other night, they very rarely call that uh, five seconds inbound. Yeah. Very rarely. Unless, like you said, it's, it's very obvious. Marcus Ashmole gets set to come back in. He will replace somebody. Somebody doesn't want to leave. Brian, uh, Brian Carley. Brian Carley. I don't know if his, his dad may be Charlie Carley, an engineer from South Brunswick. And that basket is good. 
Nice play by Chase Barneys. St. Joe's coach is livid. Well, that one, I think they, well, let's take a look at that again. I, again, that might have been, the, I thought they blew the whistle before he was in the act of shooting. Well, I was right once and wrong once. It works out to the advantage of the Patriots as we see Chase Barneys. He's the only junior in the starting lineup. The shot is up and good. good. And the Patriots recapture the lead, 20 to 18 with a minute and 55 to go. We've got a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Now I talk. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Joe. That's, that's the way we want it. Oh, yeah. We, we don't want a blowout. No. We want it down to the last 30 seconds. Well, unless it's your team. You, you wouldn't, always wouldn't mind a blowout by your team, would you? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you could be guaranteed a win in dramatic form, you'd take that. But Nice ball movement by the Falcons. Gets it down low to Can't Lane. Go. Barney's with Barney's. the rebound. A lot of contact there. Nothing then. Get it down low and banking it in is Kobe Chapman. A little bit helter-skelter on that trip up the court by Colonia Joe, but... The end result was good. Colonia pulls out four points. Tyree drives the lane and gets, we get a foul. Let's see if that's, Corbett looks like he is arguing his case with the referee. Now they called it on Chapman, I believe. Yep, that would be his second. And the team. Team's ninth. So Tyree is three for three. Nine fouls against the Patriots in the first half. Three against St. Joe's. That's unusual, right? A little disparity uh, there. On the surface, it would seem a little disparate. But uh, yeah. most of them were on drives. Right, Tyree oh. misses the second. Nguib with the rebound and a minute and three to go. A long time for Colonia to hold the ball. Some pressure in the backcourt by Goldie. Out of bounds. Another kick. Colonia up by three points. Still a long way to go in this game. Oh, we got a lifetime. <laughs> Corbett with the ball. Pavalacqua stops inside the three-point arc. Get, can't get it to go. Rebound Goldie, and here come the Falcons with 37 seconds to go. Oh, he there pushed. He pushed. Yeah, that's an offensive foul. That's a yeah. good call. He got his arm out there. Yeah, he swatted at him. That was Vujadinovic, his second. Fourth foul on him, so Vladinovic will Vladinovic will come out of the game. And here's the replay again. You saw it right there. He shoves Barney's to the uh, floor. Barney's going to walk it up now with 31 seconds to go. I suspect Colonia will attempt to hold it as they did at the end of the first quarter. Been a terrific quarter, a terrific half so far for. Colonia. Yes, it has. I'm sure, if you had asked Coach Chair if he'd take a uh, chance to have a five point lead with 12 seconds to go in the first half, he'd, he'd, he'd take a sign on for that right now. Barney's in the game now for St. Joe's, is number 30. That's Dexter Jackson. Barney's That's goes good. up and gets it to go and draws the foul. That's good. With 1.9 seconds to go, what a play by Chase Barney's. Let's take a look at the replay. Look. Again, we see him go up, under, and it's good. And Carly can't believe it. No, he's in dismay. <laughs> That's his first. Barney shot, no good, tipped around. Carly gets it, one second to go, and that'll do it. What a terrific first half for Colonia, Joe. Yes. 24-19, Colonia up on top at as, the half. As we head into halftime, you will not want to miss the second half, I promise you. Come on back, everybody. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Oh, You should pick that up. 
<laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as the crowd from the Colonia crazies goes wild as we get set to start the second half. It was just what the doctor ordered for the Patriots in the first half, Joe. Yes, it was. They pulled out to a five-point lead in uh, the beginning of the game, and they maintained that at halftime. They held St. Joe's to seven points in the second quarter. That's their signature. They played terrific defense. Now, they got some fouls called on. They had nine. Haynes has two. Chapman has two. Thompson has two. Nobody in... Well, the big guy, uh, Vujadinovic, for... St. Joe's has two. Nobody else with more than one. The number two seed versus the number one seed. St. Joe's comes in having won five straight conference championships, 42 straight GMC games. We should note, of course, that Colonia hasn't lost a GMC game this season either. And oh, no, he there's traveled. There's a travel. Yep. Granda got his foot to extend it, and then there was contact, but the referee chose to call the travel, and I think he was right. He called it before. The foul occurred, or occurred as a result of that. Colonia is shooting to the right uh, when you're watching on the uh, screen. Shooting for Colonia. McGuib tries to thread the needle, and the Patriots are lucky to get it back. McGuib now goes up and under. Carly and gets it. They're rolling. On the floor for Colonia is Chase Barneys, Jadrell Thompson, J.J. Corbett, Brandon Hayes, and Patrick McGuib, who just had that last basket. When John Novick throws it away, let's see, can Thompson Saint save Joe's it? ball. He cannot. Kind of think that uh, they should have pulled up and uh, set a play instead of trying to yes. race towards the basket. Well, they got a little excited, so an opportunity to lengthen the lead. Seven-point bulge now for the Patriots as we play here. Third quarter, and another, another steal. steal. There's Corbett. Finds Barneys, and let's see, a whistle, and yeah, I think it's going to go against Chase Barneys. It is. That'll be his first, first team foul of the second half against the Patriots. Colonia got here by beating number 18 seed Bishop R, and then number seven Carteret, and finally number six East Brunswick. Nice pass down low to Asimov, who's wide open for the layup. He has eight. Yeah, nobody under the quick, basket. Quick timeout by St. Joe's, I believe. Coach Turco was out on the yep. court. Well, St. Joe's. I think that was their first. It's not on the scoreboard, so I just have to try to keep myself. A little footnote to today's game. F Coach uh, Turco from St. Joe's comes into the game with 399 wins in his coaching career. Wow, for high so, school? Yeah, he will. He will um, but look at the teams he's had uh, the last five years. Well, he has, and, you know, there is there's lots of discussion in the high school basketball world about schools like St. Joe's or you know, I know what you're going to say the uh, St. Anthony's and the Patrick schools and the competitive disparity I guess between uh, those schools or and others of course uh, and the traditional public high school now pressure in the backcourt by St. Joe's but Turco also won at Carteret when he was there and he won at Monroe he's a heck of a coach Ball goes down on the court, and we got a top. No, Granda gets the save, and then Brandon Haynes comes out of nowhere to knock it away. The referee's letting him play here, Joe. Yeah. It was not a quick whistle. Thompson gets it to Barney's. He's out slipping down. Can he save it? Nice play by Brian Carley. And coast to coast goes Ujanovic. Colonia's still up by three. 
not the best of game here so far for Colonia. They've been losing the handle on the ball and slipping, and sliding and out of control. Three-point game now. Brandon Haynes outside the arc, guarded by Ashmole. Thompson directs a little traffic. Both teams still in a man-to-man. -man. Corbin gets it to Barney's. He shot, stops and pops. No good. Good hustle there by Thompson to try and save it, but it goes out of bounds into the cheerleaders. And St. Joe's will have the ball with a chance to tie with a three. We'll cut it to one with a two. Both teams now shooting into their student section. Shooting at the basket behind which oh, there's I think they got uh, Chapman, I think, or Nguib. That's no, Nguib. It's against the... Uh, yeah, let's see. I think it's Nguib, and that's his yeah. second. Second foul of the second half for the Patriots. Miranda goes to... Brown, crowd looking for a uh, foul, no call. Miranda nice goes cut. down, now there's a nice move to get under McGuinn. Carly with Kicks the rebound. Out. Ashimol for two, no good, right into the hands of McGuib. Ahead to Corbett, he goes up, can't get it to go, has it tipped away, but gets his own rebound, fights on and gets it to go. J.J. Corbett, he's got 11. And we have a stoppage of play for some reason. I talked to Brandon Hall, of course, basketball royalty here from Colonia. He was a tremendous player. We saw him play some tremendous games. He's now assistant coach at Woodbridge. I talked to him after the semifinal victory over East Brunswick, uh -huh. and he thought that, you know, Colonia could, could play with St. Joe's. And, Brandon, you look prophetic. Four and a half minutes to go. Colonia on top by five. I definitely think Colonia is, uh, could beat them. Ashamal all alone for the putback. They've got to watch that. It's two baskets now where they were. He's got double figures, 10. Under the basket yeah. with nobody there. Barney's restores a little bit of order and walks it into the forecourt. McGuib saves that one. He wasn't expecting the pass. He was starting to make his move inside. As you said, man to man again for St. Joe's. Thompson makes the move, now backs it off. Haynes goes down the lane, finds Corbett, gets it blocked by Carly, gets his own rebound, and in the third attempt, he gets it to go. Brian Tyree is hurt. Yeah, Brian, Brian Tyree is limping uh, seriously as he goes along the uh, far side of the court, and he's quick, a quick timeout by Coach Turcott. That, Turco, uh, I should say. That happened before that last basket. Uh, he was in the lane, and he just went down. And there we see Eric Legrand, and there's there's uh, Brandon Paul in the foreground. That's there, and there yeah. we see his dear friend and uh, an inspiration to all of us, Eric Legrand in the uh, in the hat. Colonia alumni. There we go, Colonia alumni, Rutgers alum, and just a terrific young man, just an extraordinary person. You can't help but to be up being around him. No, you can't. I've you know talked to him a dozen times, never not happy, always polite. And boy, was he a good player. Chase Barney's with the ball, bringing it up. Nice steal again by Colonia. To, so their defense continues. Tyree trying to walk it off on the sideline. Nguib outside the three-point arc. He'll drive the lane. Oh, uh, they got him walking. Travel. He got tied up a little bit, and I think he stumbled as he went down the, the lane. And now Carly will check out for... St. Joe's and Bryce Lane will check in. Tyree over on the bench feeling his ankle. Boy, that would be a big loss for St. Joe's. It would. He's in pain. Now he's the best player, D1 prospect, I believe. Uh oh. They call a tie up, and it's going to be Colonia Ball. I don't know. Did you see a tie-up? Uh, that was a quick whistle on that. And yeah, it was. Granda tried to get through the trap. Was falling to the ground. Cloney gets the whistle. 
2.47 to go, third quarter. Colonia holding on to a 30-25 lead. As long as those quick whistles go with us. <laughs> yeah. That's a three by Corbett, no good. Up high for the rebound is Lane, but he can't control it. And it goes off his, off his hands and out of bounds to the Patriots. 30-25, Colonia's up by five. 233 left in the third quarter. Colonia having trouble getting it in. Pass down low to Thompson. He tries to find room and around. He does. Yeah, to Novick, and he does indeed. Joe Drell Thompson with six. And the lead is back to seven for the, the Patriots. And nice oh. anticipation by Corbett. He's all alone, goes to the basket, and, and it's in. in. JJ Corbett. And a they call, out? Yeah, they could call the foul. Oh, they called the foul as well. So let's take a look at that. Here it is again. We see Corbett all alone. Yep. Yeah, got him in sure the leg. I don't know. But Granda gets called for the foul. And the Patriots now with a chance to take a 10 point lead. Number 11, Brandon Goldie checks out. Number 30, Dexter Jackson checks in for Tyree. Looking Jones. to come no in. No good. Game. Tipped away by Brandon Haynes, but he came over the back. And he will get whistled for his third foul. Tyree's back in the game. That's good news for the Falcons. Going Looks out. Like he's walking a little gingerly. And yeah. With three, he's going to go to the bench. Trevor Bevilacqua checks in. So it's Bevilacqua, Corbett, Barneys, Thompson, and the Gwib. Lane, Nashimal, Jackson, Green, and Wujanovic for the Falcons. Good defense, and now we get a whistle. No, and Thompson can't believe it. He sort of runs away. Not by the way. Not yet. Oh, okay. That's the third on Jodrell Thompson. Talking to the ref, pleading his case. He's got to be careful. Yeah, he's better be. Take it easy. You, you can see where things can go ugly, right? You yeah. Get a technical, a couple of free throws, side out. Here we see it again. And we get another whistle and timeout. I don't know who to call the timeout. St. Joe's calls the timeout. Yeah, he's got to calm. Uh, That's, that was fortuitous for Coach Chier. I'm sure he would have loved to have been able to call timeout there. He doesn't have the ball. Had they got the ball in before he could call timeout, I should say. Let's take another look at that last uh, foul. Good defense. A lot of contact. And you slapped yeah, him in the head? No, I think you got him on the wrist, and then we see Thompson react. Yeah, he's got to be careful. Coach Jarrett's has got to calm him down. Wow. That, that would be a loss. Right. You see him. He's lecturing the, uh, the team. It's also loud in here, ladies and gentlemen. It's, kind of, it's a lot of fun. If you uh, get the chance next year, there's somebody from the team from Woodbridge in. Come on up. It's an awful lot of fun. It's loud, and the crowd is into it. and Pretty big crowd. Yes, it is. Parking lot is full. Jackson will inbound for the Falcons. Nobody there. Finally gets it to uh, Badenovic. Stolen away by Corbett into the hands of Thompson. He has it poked away. Goes right into the hands of Corbett. Referees are letting him play. There's lots of contact here. Minute 30 to go. Colonia with the ball. Up 34, 25. Nguib outside the arc. St. Joe's playing him tough. Barney's guarded by Jackson. Move by Barney's to the basket. Nice control of the ball, but can't get it go. The whip is there, can't get it to drop. And as Bryce Lane hits the court, we've got a foul. Uh, I think that foul is on... Uh, I think it's going to be on Cor Corbett. Nope. Yeah. yeah. I think it's on... Oh, it's on whip. Whip, and that's his third. That's bad news for, uh, and there we, there we see it. 
Yeah. yeah. He cooked his arm. You can see it there as he knocked, drives him to the ground. Knocked him to the ground, yeah. One minute to go here in the third quarter. Patriots. On top. Short, no good. Rebound, Barney's. Everything's been going Colonia's way this uh, quick quick quarter. Quick shot by Vajadinovic. The bounces have been going Colonia's way. They just need to capitalize on it. Bevilacqua is Colonia content to run some sets. 30 seconds left. And run down the clock. Good discipline on the part of the Patriots. 23 seconds to go now. They're holding on to a nine-point lead. McGuib gives it to Barney's, and we got a shove by Jackson. Yeah, Dexter Jackson got him. That's his first. Just the second team foul. So, like as it was in the first half, where there were I think nine fouls against Colonia and four against St. Joe's, are sort of in the same position. Five against the. Patriots and two against the uh, Falcons. Ball comes back into Nguyen. 12 seconds to go now. Out to Corbett. Guarded by Tyree. He'll make his move down the lane. Six seconds to go. Finds Barney's. Three seconds to go. He'll drive the lane. Goes up and under and draws the foul as yeah. the clock expires. That's what he did at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, it was 1.9 seconds left on that one. And we get a foul. And and it's called on Dexter Jackson, his second team's third. And so Chase Barneys will end the third quarter here with a couple of free throws. Just like practice. Yep, first one is up and good. Nice yeah. soft touch. 10 point lead for Colonia. Gets the ball, rotates it, oh. and can't get it to go. So he finished the in the game at the two out of four from the free throw line. Let's take a look at that foul again and a nice play here by Barney's. Lots of patience by the junior. Probably a foul there. Gets to the basket and oh, there's yeah. the foul. Got him in the head. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the uh, Colonia Patriots up on top of the St. Joe's Falcons, 35 to 25. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Come back. Fourth quarter, folks. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are set for the final frame here. Eight minutes to go. Colonia 35, St. Joe's 25 in what would be the biggest upset in years in the big there in the Middlesex County Conference, Joe. Yeah, after St. Joe's has won the last five years. Colonia is up by 10, Saint so they just have to play their defense like they've been playing. St. Joe's gets the ball to start the fourth quarter. Tyree drives the lane, and if that's McGuib, it's going to be his fourth foul. I think it is. That's a tough one for Yeah, yeah that is. I'm going to take a look at it again. Yeah, he got him. He ran into Bevilacqua and Nguib. Obviously, the Patriots rooting for Bevilacqua to pick up the foul here. Kyrie is three out of four from the free throw line. Now four to five, but he has just uh, five points on the game. Nguib comes out. He's gonna have to sit down till the last three, four minutes. That's a big loss for Colonia right there. Second one is up and off the front of the rim. Rebound Thompson. JJ Corbett going coast to coast. And that tip in by Bevilacqua, I think. Two St. Joe's players on the deck. And now some pressure. In the backcourt, Trevor Bevilacqua has his first basket of the game on a huge putback. 11-point lead now. Super sub, Bevilacqua. Yeah. Well, 
Oh, nice one-hander. Who was that on six? That was uh, Ashmo. Ashmo with the uh, 12 now. 37-28, Colony up on top. Barney's fakes the three. Way outside, gets to the lane, goes up and under and lays it in. in. Terrific recognition by Chase Barney's that he had an alleyway to the basket. And Colonia is playing their hearts out tonight, Joe. Yes, they are. 39-28, up by 11. Sort of a stunned silence in among the student section at uh, the St. Joe's end. Behind the basket that the uh, St. Joe's folks are shooting at. Lane gets it, can't get it to go. Rebound, Bevilacqua. He gives it to Haynes and Colonia with an 11 point lead, content to walk the ball up the court with 6.06 to go. The Colonia crazies are just waiting to explode. Listen to him on this next basket. Haynes guarded by Lane. He gets a step, goes down the lane, flips it to Bevilacqua, wisely throws it back out. Barneys goes up, can't get it to go, tipped away. Vladanovic comes down, is going to go coast to coast, lays it off to Ashimo, who lays it in. Thompson was smart to get out of the way and not yeah, commit a foul. You aren't going to stop him, and you're not going to get a charge, so. Those are the fouls you have to avoid. Nine-point game. Corbett. Kick off to St. Joe's. Yeah, tried to get it to Bevilacqua, but went off the foot of Lane. Brando will come out, and he's replaced by Goldie for the Falcons. And we get a whistle. And I think Brandon Goldie's going to get called for a holding foul. Yes, he did. Fourth foul against St. Joe's. First by Goldie. Corbett triggers it into Barney's. Colonia doing a good job at spreading the court right now. That's how they found that open lane there, the last possession. Just moving the ball around. Holdy really guarding Barney's closely. Now we see some good defensive work, but Barney's gets a step, dishes it off to Haynes, who and it's it in. And gets it to go. Brandon Haynes with his first basket of the game. Timeout, St. Joe's. Oh, oh, Colonia. Colonia calls the timeout off the made free throw, and with 4.53 to go, and the Patriots on top, 41-30, we'll take a break. Come on back. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Tarrant, Craig Coughlin from the rack, Colonia. Four, 49, four minutes and 49 seconds away from a huge upset. They hold a 41-30 lead over St. Joe's here in the GMC Championship got, game. We got a whistle and a foul. On Haynes, I believe it was. Yep. And that's going to be his fourth. So now four on Naguib, four on Haynes. He'll be replaced by Desmond Jackson. And Breen Tyree will go to the free throw line. Tyree with just six points on. He's been quiet today's game. This is a one and one. Six points and just one field goal. Makes the first. Patriots have been outstanding defensively as has been their mark. 25 points is all they gave up in the first three quarters of the game. Just a remarkable performance. They gave up 12 in the first half and 13 in the second and third combined. The second one's good. Three makes both. So he's now six out of seven from the free throw line. He is not the guy you want to foul. 
trying to keep an eye on Tyree and see how that ankle's doing. It looks to be uh, doing okay. Long pass. Yeah, Corbett with a nice job to save that. Finds a wide open. And it's Thompson. good. He lays it in. Beautiful pass by Corbett. Eight now on the game for Thompson. And it's 43 Intercepted. And there's a steal by Corbett. He finds Barney's. He goes up and blocks a foul. by Goldie. And now there's a little jawing going on down there. Got to be careful. Don't lose your cool now. Goldie got a lot of ball on that and was upset that he got called for the foul. And he started jawing and the Barney's came over and bumped him. And referees. Here's the replay. Separate. Here we go again. Stolen beautifully by Corbett. Here's the pass. And then we see. Got him on the shoulder. First one is no good. Chase Barney's. Barney's now struggling from the line. He's just two out of five. Second shot on its way. It's up and good. Good. Nice soft stroke. So he's three out of six, and it's a 12 point bulge for the Patriots. As we play here in the fourth quarter, GMC Championship. St. Joe's will need a big comeback if they're to win their sixth in a row. Four minutes left. And we got a holding foul. Yeah, he did. Corbett had the, the jersey of Tyree. That's his first, believe it or not. 18 down, so it'll be one and one. Terry, as we said, six out of seven. That's the one we don't want to foul. Well, it's going to be the one with the ball a lot. I see. Yeah. He's their leading scorer, best player. First shot is up, and no good. Oh, good. They have a lock a high for that rebound. A little more hop in the step of the Patriots, right? Under four minutes to go now. Corbett bumped by Goldie. Goes to the line. And draws the foul. And draws the foul. Goes to the basket, I should say. And draws the foul on. I think it's going to be an Ashamol. Yes, it is. His first. Six team foul now against the, the Falcons. Let's take a look at it again. Here we see Corbett. Probably got fouled there. And he certainly got fouled there. Yeah. A lot of body. Corbett will go to the line for two. First one is up and good. Colonia fans in that end are smelling blood. 13 point lead. Second one is on its way. No, no good. good. Rebound Ashamal. 13-point game. Colonia up on top, 45-32. 3.40 left in the uh, fourth quarter. Goldie dribbling outside. Tight defense by Barneys. Gets it back to Jackson and travels. St. Joe's is making all the mistakes. They are. I haven't seen them play like this. Uh, well, you haven't seen them down by four, 13 points with three and a half minutes to go. No. You know, they're, they're, young, they're young men, and uh, they're not used to dealing with this kind of pressure, I suspect, except a couple of times a year, right? Yeah, how many I mean, teams? they've lost three games, so they have, they've, you know, they've been in situations where they've trailed, but they've had not very often. Nice pass. The Bevel 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 is it in. Everything going Colonia's way right now. 15 point lead with 3.15 to go. That was a beautiful Tyree pass. with the crossover dribble draws the foul on Corbett. And he'll get himself back to the line again. That's only his second, right? Yep, his second team's ninth, so this will be the last time that'll be one and one. After this, it'll be a, the double bonus. Again, we got to keep Tyree off the line, but as you said, he's the one that's going to get the ball because... Uh, no good! Rebound Bevilacqua! Everything going Colonia away tonight. Yeah, everything's going Colonia away. Now, you wonder if that ankle has probably affected him. Bevilacqua gets Charge. called for the charge. I think if Bevilacqua uh, scored that basket, that would have been the... Uh, Oh, no, no, no. No, you don't no, think so? No, 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 no. Three minutes left? Yeah, it's close. But 15 points? No. You don't want to say that yet.
Tyree doesn't get it to go. Rebound, it's on the floor. And now we get a whistle and a timeout called by the Patriots that was a with 2.50 to go. Yeah, well, it, Coach uh, Chiara saw he was in trouble, called the timeout. So they've got just two timeouts left, but that's a ha easy one to call right there. 2.50 to go. Colonia on top, 47-32. We'll be back. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. And welcome back to the rack. We've got a really great game going on here between St. Joseph's and Colonia. I'm Joe Tarant, along with Craig Coughlin. We're bringing you all the action. 2.50 left in the fourth quarter. Colonia up on top. Now full court pressure by St. Joe's. They have no choice. Corbett with the ball. Out of control. Goes, yeah, he draws down the lane, draws the foul, and frustration now. You're starting to see it show itself. Goldie is upset with that call. That's about his third, fourth. That would be his third. If they, it's on him now, let's see. Yep, it's on uh, it's third. Goldie. It's his third, seventh team foul. But he's going to shoot two. He's in active shooting, of course, so JJ will get a pair. First one is up and good. Colonia Crazy's going, going nuts. 17 points. There's the foul. Goldie comes out and Jackson, Dexter Jackson, checks in. He's a he's another sophomore. Two sophomores seen a lot of playing time. Grand has started for St. Joe, so they're a young team. Good. Second one is good by Corbett. 17 point game. Now it's getting to the point where we might want to start doing some math. Tyree gets the foul, draws the foul. I think it's going to be on Thompson. That's going to be his fourth. Yeah, it was on Thompson, number three. Well, St. Joe's needs to make some three-point shots if they're going to get back in this one. They only have, here we see it again. To re nice duck under, and then he gets yeah. up and draws the foul. They only have one three-pointer in the game. No, I'm sorry, two. One by Lang, and Lane and one by Granda to start the game. That was their first points of the game. Tyree's on the line again. He missed. Makes, he had missed two front ends of one and one after being six out of seven. Bevel Lockwood back in the game for Colonia, coming out to Dell Thompson. Second one is on its way and perfect. 10 points now for Tyree. And St. Joe's is pressing. Well done by the Patriots. Boy, they did a great job to break that press. That was just terrific coaching. You can see why Chris Gier is the coach of the year. It and now the, Bar open. the Patriots play keep away. I almost called them the Barons. I hope they'll forgive me. Nice play there by Bevelock with a bat it back out. Two minutes more left. More clock will come. Tyree with this steal, knocks it loose into the hands of uh, Vadanovic. Granda will try the three off the front of the rim, no good. St. Joe's looking for a foul on that one, and now Vadanovic knocks it loose. Tyree can't control it. 147. I have to confess, I, the St. Joe's and the crowd and their, their coach is saying, I thought you called the foul. I thought I heard a whistle on Grand's shot. I think he may have gotten fouled on that three-point attempt. It was no good, and then Coach Turco is pleading his case. You can see him in the, at the top of your screen there to the right. And his green, there he is. Yeah. He's working the referee. Well, he's frustrated, of course, but I, I think he may be right in this instance. I thought I heard a whistle. Uh -oh. All alone, Trevor Bevilacqua lays it in. 139 to go, 51-34. And there's blood in the water. Yeah, there's a lot of it in the water now. Tyree goes down the lane. There's contact, and it's going to call a blocking foul on the, the grip. grip. 
I think that was a makeup call because it could have been a charge and the Gwib is done. He just fouls out with four. One of those bang bang plays. Let's see if we have it again. No, no, he hadn't he didn't get established. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Yeah, both feet weren't uh, firm. Yep. So Tyree will go back to the line. He's attempted, let's see, four, seven, 11 free throws. He's eight out of 11. He'll have another pair here. So he has gotten himself to the line. First one is up and good. Good. A little roll around nice there. Soft touch by Breen Tyree. Senior. Second one is good, good as well. That was perfect. He's 11 out of 13. I'm sorry, 10 out of 13. 125 left in the game. Colony up by 15. And now there's a foul by Grant. We're going to see a parade, I suspect, by the Patriots to the free throw line. They're going to have to make some, some free throws. But without. I'm surprised that St. Joe's isn't a better three-point shooting team. I haven't seen them all year, and you can hear the Colonia crowd, and there they are going crazy. Yeah. St. Joe's is quiet. Well, they're, they're stunned. They didn't, they didn't expect this. I mean, even if they thought First they one's good. It was their front end of a one-and-one one here by Corbett. Even if they thought they could lose, they didn't think they would be down by 16 points with a uh, minute 22 to go. And a second one rolls out. Got to start shooting some threes now. Well, now I don't know if there's enough time. But no, I don't they got, think They is. better. I mean, Grand are going to drive the lane, goes up with the left hand, kind of flings that up, tried to draw the foul. He would have been better off taking the three. Corbett breaks through. Colonia's going to win. Minute three to go. Colonia up by 16 points. And it's a route. You know what Don Meredith said? Well, the, the turn off the lights, yeah, the party's okay. over. Into Bevilacqua, wisely dribbles it out. Colonia very, very good at running clock when they have to. Barney's dishes it off to Corbett. He takes the shot, comes tied up. Uh, uh, Travel. Tra yeah, it was Corbett and, and Barney's uh, both had it, and so they took the step. 54 seconds left in the game. Colonia up on top, 52-36. Number 22, and there it goes. Brandon Haynes comes out of the game. Getting the hugs senior. from everybody. Number 22 checks in. That's Parsa Arab. He's a senior as well. Green wide oh. dunks, dunks the ball. That's going to be way too little and way too late. Thirty seconds left in the game, and there's a foul. Kind of a hard foul as he went around the corner. And again, those are frustration fouls. Yeah, there's no sense to foul in Colonia now. Thirty-two point eight seconds to go. Fourteen point lead, and Chase Barney's will go back to the line. He's got nine points on the day. Coach Jair is still coaching hard over there. Uh, he coach till they tell you to stop. Right, makes the first. You can see the dejection on the faces of the St. Joe's, St. Joe's stands players. there starting to clear out. Yeah, they're packing it up, walking away. Second one, no good. Just let them come down, score. Don't even bother pressing well, them. Well, let them use some time. Ashimo will take the three, no good. Rebound, Trevor Bevilacqua. 20 seconds to go. And they continue to foul. Ashimol whistled for the foul. I think that's going to be his second. It's going to be all academic now. Colonium wins in its second trip back. I think they're here in 2006. Yes, they were. That was the last time, 2006. They lost that one, if I'm not mistaken. Right? I believe they did, yeah. yeah. We were here. First one is good. J.J. Corbett, 54-38. J.J. Corbett has made five free throws here in the fourth quarter. He's got 20 points on the game. The second one is no good. Rebound Goldie. 
Now you just want to let him go. Yeah. There's a three, no good. Rebound Trevor Bevilacqua, and let's see if, nope. St. Joe's isn't going to foul. Colonia is going to hold on to the ball. That's it. And they will be the 2015 GMC champions as they come away with a stunning 54-38 victory over highly seated, I mean, higher seated and highly favored St. Joe's. What a win. What a game. What a game. You would think that St. Joe's coming in with the record that they had, that uh, they would give a better showing than what they did. Well, I tell you what, you have to credit the in terrific defense by Colonia. Through oh, three quarters, they gave up 25 points. I don't know if we know what, uh, what kind of uh, average they had coming into the game, St. Joe's, but I'm sure it was well above 25 points for three games. And in the fourth quarter, it was almost all free throws by uh, Tyree. He scored seven, he scored nine in the quarter. Uh, seven on free throws, and now the crowd uh, getting ready to erupt as they present the trophies. Always a little tough for the uh, the losing team. Yes, it stand is. Around and watch the presentation. Thirteen points in the fourth quarter by um, St. Joe's, but Colonia matched that with the. Uh, 19 of their own, so they won the fourth quarter as well. They won every quarter, Joe. They, they outscored St. Joe's 15 to 12 in the first, 9 to 7 in the second, 11 to 6 in the third, and then 19 to uh, 13 in the fourth. And just a outstanding victory. Tremendous coaching job by uh, Coach Chiera. He had them ready. We Colonia talked, dominated the game. We talked to him. And there they go. They just announced it here at the rack. Yes, and, and it goes wild. Here. Patriots are the champions, the number two seed. And there's the trophy. It's being held up, the plaque. What a happy moment for those young men. They earned it. A moment they will remember for the rest of their lives. Yes, Joe. they will. Yes, they will. They will never will. forget that. They will, they will tell their grandchildren yes. about this night. Yes, they will. Congratulations to them. Let's take a second to thank our incredible crew. They're all hard work. They're here for hours setting up this game. Gina Forbes, Bruno Martin, Samantha Ross, I believe it is. Welcome to the crew, Samantha. You picked your first one. Great job. And here we see the uh, Colonia players being introduced one by one. Trevor yeah. Bevilacqua. Clint Higgins back to do a special appearance. Clint, you brought him good luck. Thanks a lot. Joe Fernandez and, of course, Lee Beckerman, our director, producer. I'm sorry, Lee, I heard you say something. Ryan Dawson as well. And Steve Quetchin. So to all the crew members, thank you for a job extremely well done. We're going to let you watch. Joe and I are going to try to get a hold of a microphone. Oh, Bruno Martins is here as well. I think I forgot to mention him. So congratulations to the crew. Joe, what a great game. We're going to try and head down and see if we can get some of the players after the game. So we're going to let you watch as uh, you will you'll let you watch as the Colonia gets their awards. And, and J.J. Corbett. The MVP, 20 points today. So we'll be back. Stay with us, everybody. Here we go. We're joined now by Brandon Haynes. Brandon, just tell me about the game. What a terrific game, right? Well, we just came with the same mindset every time. Defense. And just defense, defense, defense. We just preached defense, and it got the job done. So we're happy. <laughs> you should be happy. It was quite an upset. I mean, I know you guys felt pretty confident. You thought you had a chance to win the game. Obviously, you did. In fact, you made it, you made it look a little bit easy. Uh, it was never easy, but <laughs> being St. Joe's, and I heard the crowd saying white division, white division, so they underestimated us. So I'm just happy that we just went out there with our A game, believed in ourselves, and just went out there and got this win. And now it's states, so it's back to work. Well, that's, that's the thought for the next night. For tonight, you get to celebrate and have some fun, right? Thank you. All right, congratulations on a job well done. Thank you, thank you, Doug. All right, be good. Let me go get some of the other guys over here. What, what a big win. Trevor Bevilacqua joins us now. And Trevor, you came off the bench in, in, this, in the semifinal game, gave him a big spark in the first quarter. You waited to the fourth quarter to, uh, to really make your impact on tonight's game. But talk about the, the role you played in the game. Uh, I just try to get in there, help my team out, get rebounds, score when I need to, and just 
we want to win the game. And that's what I helped them do. I'll tell you what, it seemed to me like you had a little more extra hop in that, uh, in that step there at the end of the game. You were skying for those rebounds. Yeah, you can't let anybody get any rebounds, especially late in the game, because you don't know what's going to happen. They could score, and they could spark a comeback. You guys played with a lot of discipline. You never, you never stopped, right? Was, when you looked up at the scoreboard and if the lead continued to build, you didn't give up. Tell me what you were talking to each other about. We were just saying stay focused, stay humble, and wait till the uh, clock uh, strikes zero to start celebrating. All right. Well, you deserve to celebrate, so congratulations. Good to see you. Congratulations on a job well done, and good luck in the States, okay? Actually. And we are joined now by the GMC White Division Coach of the Year and probably as happy a guy as there is in the building, Chris Chier. Chris, talk about the game. Talk about your team. Uh, you know, you know I, I think you know, it kind of helped us. You know, we had a lot of time to think tonight before the game, so we were in the locker room and Joe Drell came in the locker room and was like, Coach, you all right? I was sitting by myself and I said, yeah, just enjoying the moment here before this game and stuff like that. Getting here, you know, I, you realize the hard work they put through and then before you know it, Joe Drell's in there, then uh, he left and Chase JJ came in and Brandon, we just started talking about JJ, his first, uh, his freshman year starting. And then Chase came in, his first game against St. Joe's when he played. And we just kind of, and then Brandon when he transferred over from Roselle. So we just, we just literally sat there for 20 minutes and just talked about everything else and what it took to get here and the moment that we are here. And I think, you know, they just totally took advantage of it. You know, it's all these kids. They just, they played their hearts out. You know, I just kind of had to set the plan up and they, they, they executed. Well, they did. And you set a heck of a plan up and they played so hard on defense. They gave up, I don't know if you know, they scored. 13 points in the second and third quarter combined at St. Joe's. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that we, we know for us to win games, and like we, we talked about, the games have to be, you know, in the 30s, 40s, at the tops for us. And when we do that, we're, you know, we've had some success this year, and, you know, tonight was one of those nights. Well, you really did. I mean, they're, look, they're an extraordinary team. Yep. Uh, you're, you're underdogs by all accounts, I suspect. Yep. But uh, I didn't have the sense that your team was intimidated at all. Yeah, you know what, and you know, St. Joe's obviously Coach Turco's the best in the business, and, and you know they're five-time defending champ. So you know, for us, it was you know it, it wasn't everybody they had back from their from their past years uh, for the past few years. But for us, you know, we were in the red division all those years, and they gave us a lot of tough <laughs> tough losses that we went through. So for these guys that experienced all those and you know those locker rooms afterwards, this will be a this will be a good locker room today afterwards. So what did you tell them as you go into the fourth quarter? You had like an eleven-point lead, I think, to start the fourth quarter, and. You know, you always expect the surge to come from the other side, but it, it really didn't. You guys held them in control. How'd you keep them poised? Yeah, you know, I, I, I was just saying, too, I, I think we learned, you know, you learn quick. I think we even learned quick from the other night. You know, the other night I said I think it was a little bit my fault that we may have been a little too conservative towards the end of the game and not try to be as aggressive. And I think tonight, you know, when we broke their pressure, instead of getting the ball back out right. here, we kind of attacked the rim, and we kept, that kept it at bay and even gave us another bucket right. or two lead. So that kind of helped us out. And you made some you made some free throws in that fourth quarter. They're always critical in games. Right? Uh, always. You know, you, you you can only tell high school kids so many times in practice after running, say, hey, make your free throws. You never know it's going to be a big one, but this is this is the night when they're big ones, right? That's right. it. But that's later. it. That's it. So, so what's, what are you going to do now to celebrate? Oh, you know, we're, you know, we're going to, we said, you know, we, ha we haven't had time to enjoy because it's been one day prep, one day going. So we're going we're gonna to enjoy tonight. Uh, we'll enjoy it a little bit tomorrow. And then we're going to, you know, we, no time. We've got to refocus ourselves because, we you know, we said some another goal. We have, you know, number one seed in our section in the States. And that's one of these guys. That's one of our goals this year, too, to try to win our section. When did uh, when do you, when do you start that? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday night we play home against Westmore. So we have we have home court throughout. So it's going to be a tough section to uh, try to win. But we're going to take it one game at a time. Well, I think with tonight's victory, you showed you can play with anybody. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, as long as our boys believe that, that's all, we, that's all we're worried about. All right. Well, congratulations. Appreciate Extraordinary it. job, Joe. Yeah, Coach, the other night when we spoke to you, I asked you, who did you want to play? Uh, did you ever envision that you would take such a lead against St. Joe's and dominate the entire game? Uh, no, not at all. You know, you know our, our biggest thing is, our, you know, our kids are psyched and amped up. But, you know, we just talk about at the end of the game, when there's zeros on the clock, we just want Colonia to have more points than them. We don't care if it was 1, 15, or 20. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would not imagine. I think you know, that's a great team over there. Uh, like I said, super well coached. So, for, you know, for us to win by that margin, it just a tribute to our guys. Well, congratulations again, Coach. Thanks for covering. Congratulations on the honor. I'm, 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 I'll guarantee you would have traded that for a win tonight, but you got oh, both. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about that. That's all I wanted tonight. That's no. it. Congratulations Thanks, on a great job. We'll Appreciate see you. Good luck Thank the you. rest of the way. Yep. We, we're joined now by Patrick Guib, uh, J.J. Corbett, and Jodrell uh, Thompson. Jodrell, we'll talk. We'll start with you. Uh, talk about what this game means to you. You're a senior. Uh, your last chance to win a county championship. You came in as an underdog. You guys knew you could play with them all along, didn't you? you told me that the other night off the record. But uh, talk about the game. Uh, it was a great game because uh, 
this game, I just can't describe the experience because I remember coming in as freshmen and we all had this dream that when we were seniors, we we're going to be at the top and win a county championship, win the division and win states. And we have two of those goals down right now. And we just need to get that state championship and we'll be satisfied. Ryan, Patrick, tell me, you're, you're, the, you're the biggest guy on the team, but you're undersized compared to those guys. How, how tough was it underneath there? Yeah, it was pretty tough getting rebounds and boxing out, but, you know, I fight through it. I'm used to it. Honestly, there's a lot of bigger guys than me in all the teams, so I'm just used to it. So tell me the truth. Were you, were you bummed out a little bit that you fouled out and you weren't on the court when you finally got, when it went to zero? Yeah, I really was, honestly. The last one, I personally thought it was a charge, but I guess not. So. <laughs> well, I thought it was, too, on the first. We have replay tonight, so you get to watch yeah, it on replay. Yeah. It wasn't a charge. Oh, Sorry about that. Uh, MVP. Uh, here we are. We'll let Joe talk to the MVP. Hey, MVP. How are you? We got J.J. Corbett here. So how do you feel being the MVP? Hold that trophy up high. Uh, it's a great feeling. It, oh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Um, I just wanted to come out and play hard and do what I got to do for my team to win. So now what's, ne what's next now on the agenda? Winning the state, state championship now. And that starts on Tuesday against West Morris. Home? Yes. So how did, you, how did you feel about blowing out St. Joe's? Because nobody would have ever envisioned. I mean, we knew that you were going to win, but we never envisioned that you were going to win by so many points. Uh, it's a great feeling. Uh, I knew we could come out here and win. All we had to do was just uh, shut them down on D. We, we play our best defense, and our defense score our offense. So we knew what we could do to win. All right, there, JJ. Congratulations once again. Congratulations. We'll see you, we'll see you along the road somewhere, all right? Hopefully we'll be there. Continue to bring you good luck. Go get him. All right, Joe. So that will do it, ladies and gentlemen. Joe, terrific night, exciting night. Yes. The great game. You know, obviously great kids. And, uh, you know, for St. Joe's, a disappointing loss. But for Colonia, about as good as it gets. Well, you know, I'm from Colonia myself, and I'm very proud of this team. And I was proud to be uh, a, a part of this tonight. Uh, I was a last-minute fill-in, but uh, I'm glad that I got to see this. And uh, it's one for the record books. It was. So that will do it from the rack. Colonia is the 2019-2015 GMC Championships. Congratulations to the Patriots. Thank you all for watching, and thanks again. Good night.